This is bad news, guys. They're calling this the Armageddon of the financial markets. Yeah, seriously, guys. So apparently, after the higher than expected inflation numbers came in, the higher than expected retail report shortly followed. Put the two together and the Fed is now saying that they're going to have to float even higher interest rates in their next meeting. But stock market traders and investors may not be listening. After the retail sales data, even more people jumped on stocks. This has got all sorts of money experts sounding the alarm. Big short investor Michael Burry is comparing the stock market rally to the dot-com bubble and hints that he's bracing for an economic crash. Big bank giant JP Morgan phrases it a little bit more subtle. They say that stocks are facing a meaningful downside risk amid complacent markets. Then of course, there's the Economist paper that just came out that predicted the full on Armageddon of financial markets. Seriously guys, you cannot make this stuff up. Also, if you own a home, make sure your largest investment is protected. Get your free home warranty quote. There's a link in the description down below this video. So the main headline of the day, the strong retail data that shows all sorts of things about the supposed supposedly resilient American consumer. But here, check this out. So there's no doubt there's real strength here, Kelly. We don't want to get too much ahead of ourselves because January, right, is a really small month. But I think there's a couple things going on. Obviously, everybody's out eating and drinking, but the furniture numbers were a bit of a surprise. But if you listen to companies like Williams-Sonoma, they'll tell you that the whole out-of-stock issue that's been persistent over the past few years is now getting solved. So perhaps some of those orders were filled in January. I think the other thing is that retailers were incentivizing the consumer, and we saw that, to shop into January. Hey, you know, if you buy a gift card in January, we'll give you an extra 10 bucks. So there was some of that. And certainly there was some a lot of clearance in January as retailers try to normalize and get through those backlogs from the past few months. But, you know, it's absolutely good news as we look into the new year. Was it already priced into the stock, Stacey, or do they still reflect a, a decent discount? So I think it, this was a surprise, obviously, today. And I guess it was even more of a surprise because last week, if you listen to somebody like a Capri, who right. was talking about destocking the wholesale channel for some of these retailers, it's up to 40, 50 percent of their business. They were talking about a destock in wholesale, wholesale business down 25 percent. So if you put that in context, even some of the brands that are super strong, they were talking about a lot of the department stores being really modest about future orders. So I think this is like this is definitely a, a, a double positive surprise. What do you guys think? Are you believing this government narrative that they're pushing on us? I hear a lot of people that are saying that most of the jobs in the hyped up jobs report, they're actually in the services industry. So essentially the low paying jobs, part time jobs that people are taking as a second and third job just to kind of make ends meet. Bottom line, the economy is still in bad shape. Still, with the numbers that they have, the Fed officials seem to be dead set on floating even higher rates for the average American and people on fixed income like Social Security and SNAP benefits. The general consensus before the controversial CPI inflation report came out, it was that the Fed was probably going to be pausing the interest rate hikes once they hit 5%. But now they may be looking to go above 5%. Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin told Bloomberg in an interview that if inflation persists at levels well above our target, maybe we'll have to do more, end quote. Now, speaking at Prairie View A&M University in Texas, Dallas Fed President Lori Logan said, quote, we must remain prepared to continue rate increases for a longer period than previously anticipated. If such a path is necessary to respond to changes in the economic outlook or to offset any undesired easing in conditions, end quote. It looks like these officials jumped at the opportunity to make our credit card bills even higher as they hinted toward their interest rate hikes shortly after data showed consumer prices last month climbed 6.4% from a year earlier, higher than economists expected and still far above the Fed's goal of 2% annual inflation, which now they're saying could be something that could be achieved way off in 2026. Oh boy, they're kicking this can farther and farther down the road. Philadelphia Fed President Patrick Harker, he already hinted to a big number. Quote, it's going to be above 5% in the Fed funds rate. How much above 5? It's going to depend a lot on what we're seeing. End quote. 
New York Fed President John Williams said that having the federal funds rate in a range of 5 to 5.5 percent by the end of the year is the appropriate framing. Now, with all that said, investors now give near even odds that the Fed officials would raise rates by a quarter percentage point in June after they give similar increases in March and May. Economists at Barclays, PLC, and Monetary Policy Analytics now see the Fed raising interest rates to between 5.25 and 5.5 percent. And so that means that if you're tapping your credit card and you don't pay off the balance when it's due, you're going to be paying a lot more interest than you bargained for. Your best bet is to pay down your high interest credit card debt. You can also check out a balance transfer credit card. These cards basically put a freeze on any interest on balance transfers for a set period of time, usually up to 21 months. Now, during this introductory 0% APR period, you can pay down your debt without paying even more money in interest charges. Yeah, it could save you a ton of cash. You could also call your credit card company to try and negotiate the same APR you had, or even a lower one if your credit score is is good and you have a solid track record of paying your bills on time. Anything to help get that cash flow and residual income back up. Am I right, guys? Now, let's talk about the retail sales report and how the Fed could be using it to justify even more rate hikes. So yeah, you may have just heard from mainstream news outlets that the stellar retail sales report came out and how it beat economists' expectations. Retail sales, which includes spending on food and fuel, rose 3%. It was one of the biggest monthly increases of the past 20 years, and it surpassed economists' expectations for a 1.8% increase. In short, American consumers have not pulled back on spending on discretionary items despite high inflation. James Knightley, chief international economist at ING, he said the increase in sales was spurred along by warmer weather that encouraged consumers to leave their homes and spend money. He pointed out that, quote, we have to be a little cautious that weather patterns returning to more seasonal norms in February could get a significant correction next month, especially with household finances remaining under pressure from high inflation and slowing wage growth, end quote. Plus, I've been hearing from some carpenter friends of mine. They said that people are dropping out of projects that need loans. Some of their lead times went from two years to six months, meaning a lot fewer projects than they had before, mostly just necessary required repairs and small decks. They saw the same thing happen just before 2008, 2009. Now, I'm no Oracle, but things are not looking good. Looking at stocks, people still seem to be pretty unaware of the situation. All three major averages climbed into positive territory into the final 10 minutes of trading. Some big names on the market, you got Airbnb. So Airbnb was in the spotlight after their lodging company reported record sales in the fourth quarter, notching its first profitable year in 2022. Executives also unveiled a better than expected forecast for the current quarter, citing strong post-pandemic travel demand. Shares soared 13.4% after the news. Tesla stock advanced 2.4% after chief executive Elon Musk is now saying that he plans to appoint a new CEO to Twitter by the end of the year. Now, on a separate note, Tesla is also expected to partially pause production at its China factory to upgrade the facility to make for a refreshed version of its Model 3 car. Devon Energy Corporation shares plunged 10.5% after the company said that the fourth quarter profit it was dented by the impact of winter storm Elliott on its oil and gas wells. But be warned, guys, this rally could very well be the well-solved inflationary rally and the crash will be the oops, we didn't know. Now, as I said earlier, many Fed officials indicated interest rates they would need to go higher. Millionaire Michael Burry shot to fame after his billion dollar bet against the mid 2000s housing bubble was immortalized in the book and the movie, The Big Short. So Michael Burry is also known for for investing in GameStop well before the meme stock boom. He also betted against Elon Musk's Tesla and Kathy Wood's flagship ARK fund in 2021. Michael Burry has hinted that the surge in stocks this year reminds him of the dot-com bubble and could end with a very similarly devastating crash. The investor of the big short fame tweeted a chart that showed the S&P's roughly 40% plunge between February 2001 and October 2002. It also plotted the decline in the Federal Reserve's bench Benchmark interest rate from 6% to below 2% during that period. He said this time is different. So he's probably mocking commentators who see the latest market rally as something that's going to carry us through. He also commented recently 
that the difference between now and 2000 is the passive investment bubble that inflated steadily during the last decade. All theaters are overcrowded and the only way anyone can get out is by trampling each other. And the door is only so big, end quote. Investment giant JP Morgan Chase seems to be agreeing with the big short this time. They warned about what could be meaningful downside risks to the equity market. Early results from a survey of JP Morgan's clients showed that 68% were more likely to decrease their exposure to stocks in the coming days and weeks, while 32% were likely to increase it. In addition, 78% said that they were more likely to boost bond portfolio duration over the same period, and 22% were likely to decrease it. The survey shows how markets could be too complacent and that the stock action that we've been seeing is more like a fear of missing out kind of rally rather than the real thing. When in fact, investors have been walking away from the stock market funds and going into bonds for weeks. This may be what they call boiling the frog situation where people can't see how much trouble is building up in the stock market until it's too late. There's also this economist paper that came out from Finland. Title says Armageddon of financial markets is the United States equity market eventually going to collapse. So the paper explained that the United States stock market growth is unsustainable and is destined to crash by 2050. It also predicts that the devastating market crash is going to occur sometime between December 2043 and December 2050. They pointed to extraordinary events that rattled markets over the past decade, including the 2008 financial crisis, pandemic, the Russia-Ukraine war, which rocked global financial markets last year, those stressors have all had dramatic impacts on the world economy, disrupting supply chains and spawning high inflation. And central bankers, they're still trying to control this thing. Legendary investor Jeremy Grantham, he also warned investors of a stomach-churning crash that could wipe away 50% from the S&P 500. Ex-Bridgewater CEO Ray Dalio, he's warned repeatedly that the financial Financial markets are headed into a new world order. And after the Fed's latest rate hike, interest rates this high could easily spark a severe recession and a 20% plunge in the stock market. So what do we do? Not panic. That's number one. Now, if more volatility is on the way, here's how to protect your money. Now, in a perfect world, you would know exactly when the market reaches its bottom and so you can invest at the lowest points and the lowest possible prices. And then, of course, when the market peaks, then you would just sell for the highest prices and make a profit, kind of walk away. But in reality, though, Nobody knows how the stock market is going to be able to perform in the short term. Nobody knows. And if you're waiting for the perfect moment to buy or sell, you're going to be waiting forever. Worse, if you're attempting to time the market and your timing's off, you could potentially lose a lot of money. So a safer alternative investment then is kind of having a long-term outlook. The market may be rocky in the short term, but generally speaking over the long term, it's always managed to earn a positive average return. Now, if things took a turn for the worse, simply hold on to your investments and wait for the inevitable recovery. Now, if the stock market drops in the coming weeks or months, your stocks could lose value. But losing value isn't the same as losing money. And by holding the investments for the long term, your portfolio could easily rebound. Some experts even go out and say that market downturns can actually be one of the best times to invest even more money because prices are so low. I happen to agree with that thought process. And you can also load up on quality stocks for a fraction of the price. Then when the market rebounds, you'll be in a fantastic position to take advantage of the next bull market and potentially make tons of money. But if you want to earn as much as possible during the next upswing, it's best to invest sooner rather than later. Nobody knows precisely when this downturn will actually give way to a bull market. And we likely won't even know we're in a bull market until stock prices have increased substantially. If you wait too long to invest, you may miss out on potentially massive returns. Bottom line, if you're worried about a potential crash, you're not alone. But by choosing the right investments and holding on to them for the long term, you're far more likely to survive whatever the market throws at you. But I'm right here, guys, if you have any questions. We could totally talk more about this in my future videos. Feel free to drop me some comments and questions down below. And and to be honest with you, one of the safest ways, one of the best bets moving forward is to diversify your income. Side hustles, small businesses, drop shipping, e-commerce stores, online tutoring, print on demand. There are so many different ways to diversify your income and automate it. So if you guys are interested in that, feel free to hit me up. There's a link in the description down below if you want to join our Patreon community. But anyway, guys, that is all for today's stock market update and daily news report. The retail sales report that could motivate the Fed to raise interest rates higher and bring the stock market crashing down down. The stock market crash that could happen this year and the massive financial market Armageddon that they're warning about in the coming decades. More on all of this in the next one, guys. Just make sure you're always subscribed and you have your notification bell turned on. See you guys on the next one. Please be kind to one another and I'll see you next time.